Good afternoon and welcome back to the build of the Prince Eugen. We've now reached part 7 and in part 7 and indeed in part 8 we're going to work on the next deck up in the Prince Eugen, uh, we'll call it the upper deck. Uh, in part 7 we're going to uh, test assemble it, there's all the side walls to go on and we've got to test it and make sure that it fits onto the main deck properly. We'll do that with white glue, uh, then once we're happy with that and any adjustments that have to be made, we'll finally assemble it. We will then add all of the brass work onto it that has to go on the vertical surfaces. That's basically um, portholes and ventilators. Then uh, we'll start getting ready for painting, uh, we'll do any masking that's required and we'll get a coat of grey primer on it. That should take us up to the end of part 7. In part 8, which will follow this one uh, in about a week's time, we'll do the uh, finish, we'll finish off the painting, get the wooden decks on, and uh, that should be the upper deck finished off. But this is part 7, and at least we'll get halfway through finishing it uh, in this episode. So let's get started. Right, well, here we are um, with the hull of the ship, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to place on to it the next deck level and that is the next deck and it fits on the ship there. Now as you can see it sags in the middle and the reason it sags in the middle is that we have a lot of side walls to put in between the deck and the lower deck, the main deck of the ship and here are all the parts of the side walls that we have to put in. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parts and they all fit between the, the, this, this level of deck and the main deck. However, that's not all that's to be done. Um, we also have to uh, put on wooden decks on this section and these wooden decks uh, go here and here. We also have to paint this deck between the two sets of wooden decks. Now the paint guide which I have and which we'll just place down here for a moment is a little bit ambiguous in what colour this deck has to be and that's because let me just sorry you're getting banged about a bit here let's just tip this down a bit that's because there are no indications as for example here which is pointing to the top of the hanger there are no indications as to what colour the deck is now the deck is there there uh, it's also a section in there underneath these two boats. However, looking at the colours, it would appear that it's the same grey as the darker of the two greys on the upper hull. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint it that colour. We also have a lot of brass photo etch to put on. And if, for example, you look at this section of sidewall here, You'll see that there are lots of portholes. There are areas where there are obviously ventilators to go. And there is a lot of brass to be put onto these sidewalls. Hello again, right, now I'm going, I'm ready to start the test fitting now. Now the first piece I'm going to fit is going to be piece B8 on to the underside of the deck. Now you've got to bear in mind this is upside down. When we come to fit B8, and this is B8 here, when we come to fit that, we have to remember to fit it upside down. Now, that would be it the right way up. And as you can see, we have a couple of portholes here and we have a hatch here. But this is going to have to go in upside down so it goes in that way and it goes into position here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to white glue it into place. This is great stuff, this white glue. I really like it. Um, you can do a lot with it. Um, you can remove it if it's not right. 
uh, you can do, I do test fits with it and after the test fits are all done it's very easily broken off and you can remove it completely from the plastic parts it, it comes away quite cleanly so part B8 part B8 upside down and we'll just fit it into position make sure that it's right and that it is at a right angle to the deck that's it that's as, it's as simple as that now we're going to go around and we're going to do the whole of the underside now a problem has come up just as I'm fitting the next section in and that is that the front point of that section is a little bit reluctant to match up with the first section that we've put in and yet still be in its appropriate groove it's a little bit tight so when we come to actually fit this part in in real life what we'll do is we'll just sand a little off that edge there and uh, if we over sand it then there will be a gap to be filled but to be honest I'd rather have a gap to be filled than have this too tight and you can see I hope if I hold this up here like that you can see how that's been pushed out of its groove because it's trying to match up with that that is the reason for doing these test fits and I'll carry on and do the rest of it now and I'll make little notes as I go of what bits have to be filed and sanded and where okay that's my test fit done onto the underside of the upper deck there's one or two areas that I need to have a, pay some attention to now, generally speaking, they're where the longer parts meet shorter parts, for example, there there's a gap. And that's caused by the springiness of this part. I think that one will pull in alright um, with normal polystyrene cement. Um, there's one, I think, over here, where I'll need to do a little bit of sanding. But apart from that, um, I'm quite happy with the fit of that deck. Um, and now we will proceed um, with the next part which is to actually fit the sidewalls permanently in position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, I'm going to clean off all the, the PVA glue, and then we'll start make, take, paying attention to these parts I've made a note about, and we'll fit these parts in on this deck permanently. Okay, now we're going to start finally gluing in the sidewalls. Um, the more observant amongst you may have noticed my note uh, and I'll show you the reason for that these are the two parts that go in there and there now if you were to put it in like that it's very easy to do and it is in fact correct but if you were to put it in like that and both can be done equally easily and it's very easy to make a mistake then you will have noticed that when this is put up the correct way around and you look at the side walls the portholes where are we? yes the portholes are all at the bottom and if that was the case you would find a lungs of poor wee German matalos all down on their hands and knees in their cabins behind there trying to look out the windows because by this time the windows should be that way around and up at the top so when you're working upside down to put these parts in note to self portholes downwards and outside so you cannot do it with this piece it doesn't fit so you have to come to this piece cabins downwards and outside and fits on nicely when you turn it up the right way around the, the portholes would be at the top so now we're going to fit this in here now how are we going to do it well I find the best way to do it is to get one part accurately spotted in the exact correct place fix it there and then work out from that now the easiest place for this piece to be spotted is in that cut out there which is that part there so if we put that 
in there and fix it there accurately, we will then find that these parts are in the correct place. And although this is a bit springy, once this is sub once this is fixed, it's reasonably easy to push that up, put it in the correct place, and glue it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the correct place and we're going to fix it there. And to do that, I'm going to come with my one of my little magic clamps and clamp it there, and then just ease it in to its correct spot. And that is it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I turn this over. But you can see there that that sidewall is right in where it ought to be. Then we take a wee spot of glue and it doesn't really matter really which whether, whether you use Humbrose Poly Cement or extra or Tani is extra thin. I think we'll use a little spot of this and just pop it in there. Pop it round there. There, there, and there. Now we'll let that set and we won't do any more to that piece until that is set properly. And we'll take the clamp off, then we can work out towards the outside and knowing that that is accurate. And because we've done a test fit, we know that this will be accurate and that'll be accurate. So we'll come back shortly and complete the operation. Okay, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what I've done here with this part because there's a bit of springiness in it, I've taped it from the back round over and as tight as possible in here. And that has brought this part flush there. I've also put a clamp on, not on the side part itself, but on the deck. And I've pushed it so that it, that part has been pushed in on that ridge and now I'm going to put some Tamiya glue there and then we'll let that set for a bit and when that's done, when that's set, we'll take that off and do that part there now we're just going to move around the rest of the underside of this deck, putting on all the side walls, uh, using clamps where we need to, tape where we need to, uh, and finally getting all the pieces onto the underside of the deck. And now we can move on to have a look at the photo edge parts. Now we want to have a look now at the brass parts which have to go onto this, this upper deck. There are basically two separate areas which have to be looked at and the first of these is the vertical surfaces which are these surfaces and to do that we have to look at this plan here now on this we have pieces from fret H and this is fret H and we have pieces from fret J and this is fret J and they are basically um, ventilators here, 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 these ones and they are porthole covers and they are colour coded against what we have here um, just on this single part here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 different porthole covers and three sets of ventilators to go on. And if you look at the 
<coughs> excuse me, the various sections. Um, we've got four of these to do, so there's a lot of brass work to be done in the vertical surfaces. The reason for doing brass work at this stage is that we want to get the brass work on that we can get on before we prime and paint it because this brass work is not being left as a brassy colour. It will blend in with the paintwork on the ship. It will be safe enough to put this on, um, on for example the vertical sections because it's not really at risk of being knocked off. But railings etc on here are very much at risk so we'll leave that just now. So we have a lot of brass work to get through before we get to the priming and painting stage. So let's now uh, have a look at putting some brass work on. Right, now we've got our little piece ready here to go on here. We're going to use this glue. This is the glue I normally use for, for working with Photo Etch. Um, first of all, let's get some glue onto the part. I'm going to put this particular uh, porthole cover on open. Um, that will not be the case normally. I'll normally put them on closed, but I felt that it would be a good idea to let you see it go on open in the first case. Right, there we go. That's the glue on. The reason I like using this glue rather than, for example, super glue or um, acrylonitrile glue is this gives you a lot more time to work with. And particularly when you're working with really tiny pieces, I find I, at any rate, need the extra time. Now these little pieces are very difficult to pick up. Oh. There we go. Oh dear, dear, dear. And indeed put in place. If I can get at some stage a really close macro photograph of them, you'll see that there is what's called in naval parlance an eyebrow above the patch, above the, 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 the flap. And these are really to send any rain or spray down either side of the open hatch um, rather than run into the the porthole. Now I'm wondering if I can take this in closer and let you see what we've done here. It's not going to focus at that. I think that's it. Can you see that? So we've left the flap open and we've now got the part as far as I can make out in almost or indeed exactly the correct position. I think that's it. That one's open, we're going to do that one closed. We'll come back to this later as I said before. So let's get the closed one in position now as well. Um, I'll need to cut it out so just excuse me for a moment. Okay, now we're ready to put the second one in. And this is part H2 from the fret. So let's get a little bit of glue onto our stick again. Put it in position. And I think I'll pick this up on a knife, it might be easier to work with that way. Because this one is closed, it's now half the size of the previous one. And it does actually make it very difficult to pick up. You really want to try and get these as level to each other as you can because they are right side by side. If somebody looks directly at it, 
can pick up any slight differences. Now let's see if we can zoom in on that. Yeah, yep, that's it focused there I think. Okay, so that's the two pieces that go on there. Now, the reason for doing photo etch, and this will just emphasise it perhaps just a little, the reason for doing photo etch is to make the model appear much more detailed than it otherwise would be. Um, Moulding polystyrene means that sometimes lines, edges, um, struts, crane parts um, can half, well, have to be moulded thicker than they would be in, in if the scale was kept accurate. Um, and again, photo etch parts, replacing parts that really are too big can make a big difference to the accuracy of the model. So this is where we are now, um, zooming out uh, till we see the whole of the, the length of the ship. I'm going to go right along that wall there and get every brass piece in place. Then we'll come back and have a look at it. Then I'll turn it over and do the other set of walls. Then we'll see where we are at that point. Okay. Here we are looking at the, the aft part of the upper deck, this is on the starboard side, all the brass is now in place there and on as we keep moving forward the brass is still in place, this is still the starboard side and there's the complete length of the port side with all the ventilators and port roll covers in place. Now um, one thing we're going to have to do with this deck is we're going to have to mask off this area here and this area here because these are the areas which are going to get Artworks wooden decks put on them and uh, I'm very uh, to use an old Scottish word I'm very sweet about putting um, wooden decks on top of painted surfaces which basically means I don't like doing it I'm, I'm unhappy doing it um, because I think that um, it, it just gives another opportunity for a deck not to stick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it off and rather than using masking tape I thought we would try Humbrol's mask all again and do a slightly larger area this time to let you see how it would work um, on its own without any masking tape really. So I'm going to mask this part and this part off with uh, Humbrol's mask all. We'll then uh, put on uh, a, a layer or a coat of primer. Then we'll mask the central area over the top of the primer um, so that when we paint the vertical surfaces with the lightest of the greys that we're going to use we can then remove the masking from the centre section and spray this with the, uh, the darker grey um, which seems to be the colour that's used for a lot of the decking, which is not planked in the Prinzorium. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to mask off this section here. I'll, I'll show you me doing that. Um, I won't go through it with the other half as well because it's basically I'm just repeating myself. But um, we'll mask off this part first and then we'll get on with some of the other masking. Now I'd like to just zoom in a bit. Oops, in the wrong way. So that you can follow what I'm doing. Um, and this is where, whoops, get to the other end of the ship, which is where we like to be. Okay. Right, let's mask this off now. And uh, it'll let you see how this works. Most other masking fluids work in a similar way. I'm going to get the top off, it's one of these childproof tops. And it's a very, very effective one. It's almost an adult proof top as well. Okay. So we'll just use it straight out of the bottle. This is a brush which is specially designed for using with masking fluids. Um, when this fluid dries, it'll dry as a, a, thin, a thin film 
of what appears to be pink rubber. It's pink to make it stand out, not because of any aesthetic reasons. You can put it on fairly thick, it doesn't really matter. You do need to keep dabbing at it because it tends to act like oil and water for example, it tends to go back to into itself and retreat from the areas that you've put it on. Lord knows why. In fact that's probably true, he's probably the only person that does know why. There we go. There's a long hair in here which I'm going to try and get out. <laughs> well, oh. I'll get one of my pointer things. Nothing worse than when you get a hair in your painting. I'm sure Michelangelo never suffered from this. There we go, that's alright. Now we're getting up to the edge here. I don't want to mask off the centre section of the deck yet because I want to get a coating of... Now there's another here. I want to get a coating of um, primer on the centre section of the deck. Because that will be where um, our dark, darker grey is going to be. So that's the point that we're going to go up to on both sides. And we'll get over and do the other side as, the same way. I think that these round parts here are mountings for the 10.5 centimeter dual purpose secondary armament. Uh, they are, there's a pair of them mounted there and there and again at the stern on this deck level so there's, there's uh, there are two mountings on the main deck level and there are four mountings on this deck it's fairly common in European cruisers to use uh, a weapon roughly the size of the 4 inch as a secondary armament on cruisers. The Prince Eugen though was a very complex weapon which um, suffered from quite a bit of breakdowns in use. Uh, the, the waterproofing wasn't that great on them because it, it was an open mount, it wasn't an enclosed mount. Um, so there was issues with um, water ingress. You would come up to the edge again. This weapon on the the. Um, the armoured ships, the, the Graf Spee, the Lutzov, the um, Admiral Scheer, were triaxially stabilised. But I believe in the Prinz Eugen and the Hipper, rest of the, the, the Blucher class, um, they weren't. They were, they were biaxially stabilised, which made them slightly less, uh, less, um, less prone to... Oops, let's see if we can get a more, we drop more in there. Slightly less prone to, to breakdowns. But it was a very complex weapon. The Germans, in fact, with most of their, their, their armour and their ships, their aircraft, everything, they always tended to over-engineer them for some reason. Yeah, the Heinkel 177, the Grief, was an example in the air. Uh, the Panther and uh, Tiger tanks were examples uh, in armour. Right, okay.
that's the forward section done. I'm now going to continue and I'll do the after section here um, and then we'll look at uh, moving on and getting um, a first a, a coat of primer onto it. So, back shot. Right, so that's the deck now um, masked here and here where we're going to put the art walks, uh, wooden decks on. Um, and we're now almost ready to go and uh, paint it with, with, a, with a primer. You can see I've got all the, the brass work on here. Um, there's a lot of brass work not got on, not, a, not being put on. For example, there's a lot of ladders, stairs, companionways, all sorts of things. Uh, and indeed all the uh, railings that go right round this because it would be far too dangerous to put it on now. We would damage it almost inevitably when we're working with this. Just one other point. Um, that's the brush that I used uh, to put the masking fluid on. It's a Frisk Masking Fluid Brush Medium. And I've actually just this minute finished and immediately cleaned it out in water. And it's cleaned the brush off not too badly at all. Um, any remaining masking fluid on the, the actual brush will be able to, to be just drawn out with your fingers. Um, but if you do this immediately, you're finished with it, then uh, the brush will keep itself in quite good condition for quite a while. Right, so, as I say, next move is to prime. Well, I hope you enjoyed part 7 uh, and that there was something in it for you. We have got to the stage now where we've got the primer on to the deck um, and we're going to move on to the next part in part 8 when we will get, I hope, the upper deck finished off completely. So I look forward to seeing you for that. <laughs>